In today's video, I'm going to show you how to solve a simple Newton's law problem uh, using some basic steps. And by following these steps, you will be able to also tackle the most complicated uh, problems you could think of. So this problem here, classical problem, we have a box that is on a surface. The box has a mass of 10 kilograms. Uh, we are pulling on the box with 20 newtons, but we're not going anywhere. So no acceleration and no speed. And the question is, what is the normal force on the box and what must be the friction that is acting on the box at that moment? So the first step is always to do the free body diagram, FBD, free body diagram. What do we do in the free body diagram? We are isolating what we're interested in and we're cutting it out of the environment. And wherever I cut, I will have some force acting. For example, here I had a force. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to simplify my object, my box. I don't really care that it's a box, I can simplify it as a dot. And here I had a force, I had to pull. That went in that direction. 30 degrees, so that is my pull. I go along my line where I cut it out, so nothing happens here, nothing happens here. Now here something has happened. I cut away the surface. Whenever I have a surface, I will get a normal force which points away from the surface and I will get a friction which is perpendicular to the surface. Now which way does the friction go? The friction is always trying to oppose the sliding. The sliding, not the motion. Please memorize that the right way. The friction uh, so opposing the sliding. Here the possible sliding will be, if there would be no friction, the box would move to the right. Therefore, the friction moves to the left. This is my friction. Now we are on the Earth, or we are assuming that this box is on the Earth, so we will have gravity, which according to Mr. Newton will always point straight down. So the first step of solving this problem is done, and actually probably the most complicated step, because if you make a mistake in your free body diagram, whatever follows, you will not be able to solve it. But if your free body diagram is right, everything should work out fine. So second step, so first step was the free body diagram. Second step is select the coordinate system. We usually want the coordinate system where as many forces as possible are aligned with it. So in this case, my regular coordinate system, x to the right and y up, should just work out fine. So I have my free body diagram, I have my coordinate system. Next one, what laws are involved? So here I have gravity. So I do know that Fg is mg, and I know that there is no acceleration, so I do know that the sum of all forces must be zero. So this is actually Newton's first law of motion, and this is uh, the law of gravitation. Now, fourth step, we're splitting this up in components. So what I'm doing, I'm going to split my page in half. I'm going to write my x stuff here and my y things here. And then I'm going to go force by force and write it down where it acts. So first here, my push or my pull has an x component and the y component. So writing it here and here. My normal force is only in the y direction, so plus f normal. My friction is only in the x direction. 
And my gravity again is only in my y direction, so plus fg. And what law does apply? Well, it's first of motion, so some of all forces in x must be zero, and some of all forces in y must also be zero in this case. Therefore, all of those is zero. So I simply translated the first law of motion. All forces added up as vectors must be zero. All forces added up as vectors must be zero. I didn't put any signs in yet because I kept them as vectors. As long as I keep the vectors, the direction doesn't matter yet. If I look now at the magnitudes uh, for each component, then I have to put the sign in front of it. So in this case, the push is in positive direction. The friction is in negative direction, zero. Uh, the push in y direction is positive, push y. The normal force goes in positive direction, so up. And my gravity goes in negative direction, so negative. Next step, I'm going to plug in what I know. I know that my Fg is mg, so I can put that one in, so minus mg is zero. I also can do some trigonometrics here. So I know my x component, the one down here, will be my push times cosine of 30. minus friction is zero, and on the other side, for my y component of the push, I add sine, so p and sine 30 plus fn minus mg is zero. And now I can solve. So friction on the other side. So friction must be push times cosine of 30. So friction is, my push was 20 newtons, 20 newtons times cosine of 30, which gives me t times cosine 30. This means 17.3 Newton. And similarly for uh, this side, here I can solve for the normal force. So I have that the normal force is equal to, if I take force of gravity over mg, and minus p times sine 30. Actually quite interesting, often people think that the normal force is equal to gravity, it doesn't have to be the case. Here the pool is lifting the box a bit, so the normal force is less than what it would be if there would be nobody lifting on it. So normal force is mass times gravity, so if I take 10 newtons, let's go 10 kilograms times around 9.8 uh, newton per kilogram minus 20 newtons and sine 30 is 0 0.5. So I have 10 times 9.8 gives me 98 newtons minus 10 newtons gives me 88 newtons. Okay, I have solved it. Now, before I go on, so 5 solve it, and then 6, check if it makes sense. Check it. What do I mean by check it? Like, do my answers lie in the order of magnitude of the forces I had? Here I had about 20 newtons, 1788, I think we're there. If one of them would be like thousands, I would have to check if something is wrong. Another thing I can check is when I split it up in the components, for each force I have on one side cosine and on the other side of the same angle. 
It cannot happen that you have cosine 30 and cosine 30 for the same force in x and y. So we can double check that if I have cosine here, I must have sine on the other one. Another thing I can check is, are my answers positive? I solve for the magnitudes, you see it's not vectors, I solve for the magnitudes, uh, and magnitudes should not be negative. If math would end me, give me something negative, then it means I put the free body diagram right. Actually, if I want to rewrite, if somebody asks for the friction as a vector, right? so the friction as a vector would, in this case, in my coordinate system, be minus 17.3 in x and nothing in y newtons. Well, the normal force as a vector would have nothing in x and 88 in y newtons. And I have solved my first simple uh, Newton's law problem.